Hi everyone, I'm Holly Homer and I am super excited today to be talking Pinterest and um, Pinterest is one of those things I've had a love-hate relationship with for a while, but I'm I'm moving over to the love side. Um, so I think after I hear what these girls have to say, um, it might make my life a little easier as well. And what we want to do today is talk kind of about um, the beginning intro to Pinterest, especially for people who write, whether that be on your blog or on a book, um, just tips and tricks that we've found um, that have been helpful in promoting ourselves without having the show all about us. So anyway, I'm Holly Homer. I write Kids Activities blog, and you can find me on Pinterest as Holly Homer. And I also have some great people with me who are also on Pinterest, and I want to hear what they have to say. Um, Jenny, why don't we start with you? Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then tell us a little bit about how you got started on Pinterest, and then kind of what you pin. Okay, great. I'm Jenny Melrose from the New York Melrose family. You can find me on Pinterest at Jenny Melrose. Um, I started on Pinterest looking for things for birthday ideas for my daughter when she turned two. I didn't even really have my blog yet. I was actually just looking for different ideas and it came, popped up, found this great way to look through images and be able to organize it so it was just for me. And then I actually started writing my blog and didn't really understand how to, it could actually drive traffic. And once I did, I definitely made a huge difference in my page views. It really does, doesn't it? That's kind of how I got into it, and I just it became my largest referral source. And I'm like, what is this Pinterest? I must participate. <laughs> so, um, and unfortunately today, Lisa is with us in voice only, but that's fine. We'll take her any way she, we can get her. So, Lisa, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got started? Thanks, Holly. I'm Lisa Nolan, and my writing blog is Life Happens Then Right. And I uh, stumbled upon the Pinterest when uh, going over a lot of blogs, Montessori blogs, and I found Zena's uh, group Montessori blog and her other group blogs, and that just blew me away. But it gave me the idea for the Mom to Write and Blog group blog, which became also a, um, a website and a blog, and it's just really become this big thing. So Zena was really sort of, you know, the inspiration for what I've been doing on Pinterest and trying to just get lots and lots of moms together and um, I also use it for Montessori so I'm kind of a twofer. And I think, um, Lisa, I think you're doing some really unique things about, um, I love how you're kind of combining your social media um, groups together a little bit. I think you're doing that really effectively in ways that other people haven't even thought of. So something, and oh, tell us where you are on Pinterest so that people can find you. Oh, um, it's uh, L N Montessori. That's the uh, part of the link. And okay. yeah, I think that's probably the easiest way to, to find me. Perfect. And then we also have Melissa Taylor with us today, who literally, I love saying this, literally wrote the book about Pinterest. So, <laughs> so Melissa, tell us a little bit about, introduce yourself and let us know how you got started. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Taylor, and I uh, I write freelance, and then I have a blog too. It's sort of an education and learning blog called Imagination Soup, and I like um, the other bloggers that mentioned um, got a lot of referral traffic from Pinterest, especially last year. So I um, decided to write a book. Actually, I was kind of nagged into it by a friend of mine, Jeff Goins, and um, who said I knew what I was doing despite what I thought that I didn't know what I was doing and I thought I'd write some tips and practical advice for other people um, just getting started on Pinterest and I wrote Pinterest Savvy and there's a website Pinterest-Savvy.net and I still freelance and write uh, my own blog and I have a couple of books so I think besides Pinterest Savvy I think um, hopefully I'll have some helpful words of wisdom to share today with uh, the writers in the crowd. Well, thank everyone for coming today. I'm just super excited about it. And I think we want to just jump right in. Um, I want to start, like, I think one of the things a lot of us end up doing is joining a social media without any sort of plan. <laughs> and so one of the things I love to think about before, when like if people were just getting started or have been on Pinterest for a while but haven't been maximizing it, is to kind of talk a little bit about what your strategy is, and I, that's probably something you know better now than you did 
six months ago or a year ago. So, um, Jenny, let's start with you. Kind of tell, walk us through a little bit about your strategy on Pinterest. I um, actually had watched a hangout on air that you had done, Holly, and you had said something about the effects of, I think it was with Lori Turk, actually, and you guys were talking about look at your analytics and see what you're known for. What are you getting your traffic for? And I started noticing that I was getting tons of hits just for cupcakes, and I'm not really a huge cupcake. I mean, I have maybe 10 cupcake recipes, but I was getting tons of traffic for just for cupcakes. So I started organizing my boards around that. I have a board just for cupcakes and muffins. I have breakfast and brunch cupcakes, dinner. It's all sorts of cupcakes because I was noticing that that's where my traffic was coming from. I love that. So you are, you really lead, let your success lead where you're going to go on Pinterest. That's awesome. What about you, Lisa? Well, um, a couple of years ago when I first start, started on Pinterest, my goal was to get a lot of followers. And I really focused on that through the group boards, through Zena's boards, and then creating my own boards. And so now that I have a kind of a comfortable following, uh, which, by the way, is small compared to you all, but maybe you should also tell tell us what your who your how many followers you have. So now I think for me it's um, you know using boards, uh, for example, using my uh, writer board to attract more uh, followers for my blog, and working on a lot of the group boards and getting those uh, get, trying to get lots of traffic to those and putting those on to blogs and, and things like that. So and well, I. Think I think your strategy also shows, like I talked about, is like you have a feeling of community on your boards, which I think a lot of um, Pinterest users don't even think about it as a community. So I think that's really cool. What about you, Melissa? What has been your strategy? Um, initially, when I joined Pinterest, my strategy was content curation. I wanted my followers to just have one person they needed to follow, and that'd be me. So. I wanted to pin frequently a, a variety of things in the education world and content, and and then then people would be able to have everything they needed in their stream. And and as I grew, I um, I realized that I needed to keep the traffic up, but I didn't have any way of monetizing it. So I needed to you know sell something on my my blog, and I, that's one of the reasons I wrote my first book, Book Love, about reluctant readers. And also Pinterest savvy because it's I was I have a lot of followers and that was great and I was getting traffic but at the end of the day I wasn't making any money from it so that was so I wanted to have some pro, you know products to sell and then right now I've been um, updating a lot of old posts just to keep the traffic coming you know um, make sure I have vertical posts you know when we started out blogging and even now most of us have uh, blogs that are horizontal. Photographs, so I just have to keep regularly updating the old ones. Yeah, I just went through a blog and redesign for that very reason, and it's every single post I have to go make a new image. Uh, but it's worth yeah. it in the long run because it does yeah. it does bring new traffic. And really, yeah. um, I mean, it, that has been my strategy on Pinterest. Is my sole reason for being there is to um, send traffic to the places that I write whether that be on my own blog or on Spoonful, um, mm -hmm. or the sites I write for. And mm -hmm. so, um, because that's where I make my passive income is through traffic. And that's, but, like we talked about earlier, you can't, it can't be the Holly show on Pinterest. <laughs> People would unfollow that really, really quickly. And so I think there is a strategy to becoming that content curator that people want to want to see what they're pinning next. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk, uh, this is like my nightmare. It's like board organization. Like what do you, what are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? Let's start with you, Lisa. Uh, so one of the things I did is I, I redid my entire Pinterest page. Instead of having, you know, the first two rows of all Montessori, you know, that's going to scare away a lot of people because not everybody is into that on uh, Pinterest. So I tried to, uh, to do a little bit of everything. I have like a, a kids, get, get kids moving, a kids love gardening, a Montessori, uh, tips for moms. So I really tried to, uh, you know, sort of patchwork the first several rows of my boards to just show a little bit of everything to try to catch people to follow me. Hopefully one of those boards will really capture them. Um, and then I have to 
to also uh, spend time on my group boards. I try not to get too lazy about those boards and really go through pins and pins that really don't belong or people that aren't pinning correctly, I'll try to contact them. And so I try to be really careful to not forget, you know, to uh, to ignore my group board. So I think it's really important to kind of keep those, you know, managed really well. What about you, Melissa? How do you organize your boards? Um, so I, for board covers, I want I try to keep similar colors. And I did it right before they came out with that study that said, um, the red was the best color and green and blue were the worst so I had done everything in green and blue and it pretty much is that's what it is but I liked it <laughs> so it's just sort of a similar theme they look kind of consistent and um, I keep the seasonal boards at the top of my page just and then I just rotate them around and my um, my most popular boards and I try to keep my boards under a hundred I just deleted a ton of boards that I wasn't using wasn't pinning to including a lot of collaborative boards just because I just wasn't getting around to pinning everything and I never want to pin one thing in a row to like 10 boards because that's obnoxious so yeah that, that's my strategy yeah and um, I've had a few um, malfunctions lately on my on the plugin I use that schedules pins and I've been that person that's put it <laughs> on two or three boards in a row and I'm always like oh no Melissa <laughs> follows me <laughs> But maybe not anymore. You don't even have to admit that. I do. I do. And you're not pinning like the hey girl all the time. That's my oh, no. only thing. I don't I'll follow you. Never. Never. And no cat pictures. Never, never, ever. <laughs> So, but um, you know, I think the the I think the board organization has been one of the biggest struggles for me because, to a certain extent, um, you know, I don't want to give up those boards, like some of those collaborative boards. But then I look at the fact that either I'm not using them or what I'm pinning there is not getting the number of repins that is really appropriate. I do need to just let them go and get over myself. <laughs> But, um, and I think, quite honestly, I would be better off with probably less than 50 because I just am not over there enough to to keep track of everything. Yeah. But um, it's, some, it's like a work in progress. But what about you, Penny? How do you do it? I actually, um, in the beginning, I had no idea how I was going about it. It was just kind of boards here, board there. I was doing a party, so the parties were up in the front. Now what I kind of do is I lead by my tummy. All of my boards in the beginning are all my different ones for desserts, ones for my dinner. It's just that's what I'm there looking for, so I'm kind of wondering and hoping that that's what other people are there looking for too. So it's whatever's catching my eye, I kind of put it up there as my foods are all in the front, and then coming behind it are my crafts and other things that I'm doing where I'm excited about it, but it's kind of my belly that leads towards everything. I love that, and um, I, it kind of comes around to like when you think about your boards and like your kind of collection of boards, how that you know lets people know who you are. Um, one of the things that's kind of curious to me is like, why don't we go around and just tell me what your most popular board is? Um, you maybe the one that's the largest, and then what's your favorite board? Because I think it gives us a flavor of who you are and who people perceive you are. Um, Lisa, let's start with you. Um, okay, well, my most popular Montessori board has always been do-it-yourself Montessori. And I think the reason is because it's probably one of the few, if, if only, do-it-yourself Montessori. There's a lot of Montessori boards, but the do-it-yourself, it really captures mom needs. It's a, it's a really popular board, um, and the pins are really popular. And they're incorporated into all of my, all of my Montessori programs and my groups. So the, the, that board is listed in a lot of places for people who are just, you know, searching for that for, for their own children. Okay, so my most popular board, non-Montessori, would be the Get Kids Moving. I was surprised by that. I started that a couple of years ago, and it's, it's a really popular board. It still gets people pinning and a lot of repins. And then my favorite boards are, um, interestingly enough, um, I'm really into uh, local board. I eat locally. And so I like to have a board that highlights sustainable farming and urban farming. And I love reading uh, farm memoirs. And so <laughs> it's kind of a quirky little thing, you know, that I like having out there on Pinterest. And it draws that kind of crunchy mom and, you know, um, you know what I'm saying. So I, 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 that's, those are probably my favorite boards. Yeah. 
What about you, Melissa? <laughs> Um, my most popular board is, um, if I put it in the chat, will people see it? Does everyone see it? I'll add it to the event okay. page if you do. Um, is uh, writing, and um, I added learning and literacy ideas to that one. But it's just, my passion is getting kids interested in, and engaged in reading and writing. So that's my favorite. I love finding tons of ideas to help other parents. And, and it's like 1.4 million followers. So... Uh, apparently, Pinterest recommended it for quite a while for new users. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm eating um, paleo, so now I'm going to have to make sure I'm following um, uh, Lisa's. Um, wait, locavore? Is that what you called it? Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, why don't you put that in the chat and I'll share it with everybody? I had to change the name to Family Farming to make it a little oh. more, you know, attractive to families. And um, but yeah, definitely come on over and check some of my boards out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. My um, most popular board that I run is um, my All Things Parenting board, which um, I'm really excited about because that's probably my favorite board on top of that is just everything that has to do with parenting and um, it's a, it is a collaborative board, but I delete anything that's negative or ugly. <laughs> so it's more about the, you know, kind of the light side, the fun side, the resource side of parenting. Um, and what about you, Jenny? Um, my is actually the cupcakes and muffins board is the most popular and it's my favorite of course so I think that has something to do with it um, and that board believe it or not has only been up for like two weeks I only recently created it and it's gained the most popularity well I think that gives us hope too that we can you know we're not stuck with what we're doing that we can branch out and do something new if it's fun so that's really cool um, so Let's say, what would you kind of, let's, as we're talking about boards still, let's talk a little bit about like a strategy if for promoting your own stuff within your boards. Do you have a specific board for that? For your, is it smattered throughout all your boards? Um, how do you handle that and what have, what have you found successful? And Melissa, let's start with you. Um, I have an Imagination Soup board specifically and Pinterest Savvy board and Back before the, the changes in Pinterest, that was a really good branding idea because I could pin there first, and then whenever I repin to other boards, it would show up. It doesn't do that as much now. Um, it'll just say that I pinned it. But I do want to start there so I can keep track of maybe one pin of my own a day, if that. You know, I don't want to overdo it. That makes a lot of sense, and it's something that I keep saying I'm going to do. <laughs> Like at some point, maybe today, I can work on that. But what about you, Jenny? How do you promote yourself? I have a board that's just the New York Melrose family, and then from there, I always, when it first the post first comes out, I'll go there first and pin it there, and then from there, I'll go wait a couple weeks, whatever it might be, and then pin it to that specific board. So if it's gift ideas or if it's my cupcakes and muffins, it'll come back to that at some point and go into the actual classification like the categories. And so you're allowing a few days a week to go by between your pins to the other sources. Yes, and, I do. And obviously you're like diluting it with other pins as well. Yeah. Yes, I actually, that my one of, I pin from my link party that it's on Wednesdays with Whimsy Wednesdays, and I go through and just look for those specific boards that I have that are my most popular and just find whatever posts actually fall within that and fill it in. Yeah, and um, Sherry um, is asking a question if we pin to more than one board. And um, I'll, I, like, I know now we know Jenny does and, and Melissa does as far as the repins, and I mean, like, I do too, like, most of my stuff that I write go onto a lot of my boards, but it's over time. It doesn't happen all in one day, <laughs> or even in a month sometimes, because, um, because that's just too much. But um, in my goal in life is to have every appropriate thing I've ever written on every appropriate board at some point. It may not be till 2020, but um, someday. So, Lisa, what about you? How do you, um, how do, you do it? Uh, well, I, I'll talk about my writing uh, blog and my writing pins. Those are probably the most challenging um, to get, you know, to get a lot of uh, repins and traffic to. But I do the same thing. I'll pin my uh, post uh, to my blog board, 
and then repin it to another uh, group board that has um, you know a lot of followers. And then I'll wait a couple hours, maybe in the evening, I'll go back and pin it to a couple other uh, group boards, and um, I, I kind of do it that way. I do the same for my group, uh, mom to write and blogcom We have a, a blog, and we have a board for that. So it's kind of the same strategy. I only pin to two boards at a time, um, and then I wait a couple. And it's good, I think, to pin at different times during the day, you know, because there's different traffic. So but I only pin like twice a week anyway because I'm doing so many other things. So I, I couldn't be strategic every single day. <laughs> well, that's good to know that you, you have a good following and you're not there every day. I think that's encouraging, too, as long as you're smart about it. And Vicki um, mentions that she uses a spreadsheet. Um, I do that, too. In fact, I use a Google um, Docs form that when I pin it the first time, I put it in there, and it puts it into this big spreadsheet that I can check off when other things are pinned. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for me. Because I do, I am in charge of um, three to four posts per day, <laughs> so I don't want that to be overwhelming to my followers on Pinterest, but I want all those things to go out there um, each day. So the next thing I want to talk about is time management, because like um, Lisa said, we do have other things to do than hang out on Pinterest all day, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, Jenny, why don't you talk a little bit about um, how you manage time and any tips and tricks you have. I am actually a teacher as well, so it's difficult for me to find the time during the day at all that I'm able to pin. Um, and without having something that definitely schedules all the time, I end up having to do a lot of my pinning over the weekends and at night once the baby and my toddler is in bed. Um, so for me, it's kind of like I have to get it all done at once, and I, I just don't have another option. Um, I'm hoping for something for scheduling, but we'll see over time. Jenny, how much time a day do you usually spend or a week, um, you know, kind of get a feeling for that? I'd have to say at night I might get on Pinterest maybe for about 15 minutes. I like spending all my time on Google Plus, to be perfectly honest. Um, kind of addicted to it. So, um, But on the weekends I spend more time on Pinterest. Friday night and Saturday mornings I can normally get some stuff done while the girls are kind of amusing themselves for like five minutes. So. Yes, and I believe, and I think Melissa will back us up on this, like short little spurts, you can get a lot done in three or four minutes. In fact, Melissa, why don't you talk a little bit about your strategy and how much time you spend? I try not to spend more than five or ten minutes and do it three to four times a day. And a lot of times I'll get all the pins I want in the morning, I'll just right click and open it, so then I can go to them later and they're already fast and quick and I know I can pin a variety. Like I don't want to pin... 10 things to just one board. You know, I hate when people do that. They're like look, searching for, a, I don't know, their, their Cookie Monster birthday party and like 10 million pins are Cookie Monster birthday party. So I try to do one for one category, one for another and keep it sort of spread out in, amongst different topics and boards. Yeah. I need to control my muting here. Um, there you go. Lisa, what about you? Um, since you're only doing it twice a week, are you spending more time at each time, or are you spreading that out throughout the day as well? Uh, well, the, the twice a week uh, pinning and repinning, that's what I would call strategic uh, pinning. So that's when I'm really being careful and really strategic. Those are all, I have those two days also as my blogging days where I try to do, get all my blog posts done. Those are also the two days when my, my husband's not home for dinner. <laughs> so I have extra time because he's not around in the evening. It's just a great couple hours for me to just really focus on blogging and, and pinning and repinning and spreading the social media love, as I call it. Um, but during the week, I'm always finding stuff to pin. There's just so many wonderful things that you come across. Um, but that's just sort of as part of your daily, you know, uh, you know, things that you do during the day online. So. Yeah, and I love that um, because, like Melissa said, with the opening up all the um, tabs at once, I am like Jenny. I would spend all day at Google Plus if, if <laughs> life would allow. And um, but that is where I find the majority of my pins. And so when I go through all my notifications in the morning, um, I open up all those windows, and those are the things that get pinned throughout the day. And so um, if the cool thing about a lot of these social networks now, especially um, 
um, Peg Fitzpatrick has such a great article about, you know, Google Plus and Pinterest are like peanut butter and jelly, is because you are finding amazing content when it works on one place, it works really well on another. So I think that's a really, really neat thing. So let's talk a little bit about analytics. Um, I have only been using kind of the analytics that that is there on Pinterest um, just recently. And I'm curious if anyone else is using those or if they're relying more on their Google Analytics and their site analytics as well. Um, let's start with Lisa on that one. Lisa, what kind of analytics are you using? You know, I used to do analytics a lot. Uh, I started blogging in 2008, so I, I, I did a lot of that early on in the early years. Um, but now, looking at Pinterest, um, I concentrate on uh, pinnings and repinning. And when I go to my group boards, I look to see what, you know, what's been pinned twice or what's been pinned but um, is not really appropriate for the board. So I kind of focus more on that. I haven't really gotten into the Pinterest analytics yet. So it'll be interesting to hear what other um, moms have to say. What about you, Melissa? Are you using um, the analytics or anything in addition to that? I'm not. And I hardly ever check my own analytics unless I need to update my media kit. Um, but when I do, it's really impressive the half-life of a pin because there's a pin from last year that still is my number one um, traffic source. So that's pretty impressive. And, and it was a book review on um, bullying in elementary school. So um, I love that, it, although I keep trying to beat it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the other, you know, Pinterest analytics, it's, it's not helpful to me personally, and I'm, I'm hoping that, what, is it called the API? Whenever they, re Pinterest has to release the coding, so I'm excited about that if they ever do, so we can get more information and scheduling, hopefully. Yeah, I know one of the questions that we had on the event page from the very beginning was um, Google Plus has something that's called Ripples, which you can look and see, oh, you know, this post was shared by three people, and then those three people sh were shared by two more people, and you can see the ripples of a post that goes out. And, on, on, you know, for most of us on Google Plus, you know, that ripple may start with maybe 21, 22, you know, people interacting with it and then going out. Whereas on a good pin, I may get a thousand repins. I would love to see the ripples effect to that. And I haven't found anything that can do that. I don't know if anyone else has. But, you know, I think it would be really helpful in planning, you know, pins for the future if we knew what, what really was resonating not only on that inner circle, but beyond that, um, besides just traffic. So, um, Jenny, what about you? Um, I end up using the analytics more for knowing what should be pinned during that time to like see which group board works really well. Um, I am part of like certain tribes that like one is for food tri a food tribe that I work with that we do a lot of pinning parties and things like that. And to know when to pin their things and what board is going to be most effective at what time of day because I am limited in the amount of time that I can get on there so I want it to be the best time for them and to be able to get repins off of it. So I use the analytics more for that. As far as Google Analytics, I actually um, had my analytics installed incorrectly for the entire summer. so. Um, I thought I was going to have to jump off a bridge because my analytics were so bad. And finally, Kelly Dixon helped me figure out that, yep, they weren't installed correctly. And it was four times the amount of what I was actually seeing. So, um, But I did notice that the entire time it was Pinterest. That was my number one referrer. <laughs> well, and it is useful um, if you are a Google Analytics person and it's installed correctly, <laughs> which I totally do not understand how they can even allow it to be installed several times. You're not the only person that's happened to. <laughs> that just seems crazy. But anyway, um, is to be able to look back and see like which of those posts is resonating with that traffic and with your followers on Pinterest. And then, you know, and the funny thing is, is a lot of the ones that are like that, you know, the like the most popular pin from Kids Activities blog is a post from 150 years ago about saving money, which I think is like the only post ever written on the blog about that. But that's what resonated in that, you know, in that space. And so, of course, since that time, we might have written a few more posts about it. <laughs> because like Jenny, I'm not going to give up on something that's doing well. <laughs> so, so I think that is helpful. Um, so the other thing about like 
bringing traffic in through Pinterest, and Melissa talked about it a little bit, was the kind of the reconditioning of old posts and pins. Like, what kind of tr tips and tricks do you use to kind of revive a pin or or go back, to, you know, into your archives? You know, how do you keep that traffic coming even if you're only publishing a few times a week? Um, let's start with Lisa. Um, for me, that that works really well with my Montessori blog, especially my Confessions of a Montessori Mom, because that blog I've had it for five years, so I have a ton of old posts that don't have any pictures, and so I definitely do that when I don't have time to create a new blog. Um, but with my writing blog, um, I don't have a, a very many old posts, and when I have a repinned old post, it didn't really get you know the traffic that I wanted or the repinning. So what I've been doing is I've kind of I well I basically got this idea from you all doing those roundups with the kid activity bloggers. I now do roundups with the mom let parent humor um, bloggers and in fact we just did a potty training roundup and it was all humor potty training and so the, a lot of those posts are all put together um, and a lot of those are, are, are recycled. So, and, and writers definitely want to be able to recycle their writing because it's to them always current. So I'm always looking for ways to, to help writers do that. It's so true. And potty training is timeless. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is like once you get through it, you just are so glad you don't even want to think about it again. But use that knowledge for good for the future on Pinterest. <laughs> so, be so a listen. potty training board. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hello. So how about um, one? Melissa, <laughs> what are your strategies to kind of keep that that traffic coming to the you know to a blog or to a, a site? When I go back to my old posts that have just horizontal, teeny, yucky, and terrible fonts, I mean, it's sort of embarrassing that what I did back in the day, um, I just usually delete the images and start over with a good, a good image that I can um, make vertical so it looks like a really cool post. And sometimes I'll just kind of copy the same template for the pen, you know, with a, a title and a subtitle and two different fonts. and and just do it as fast as I can so it doesn't take up too much time. Sometimes it does, you know, it's really time consuming. So I don't do a ton every week, but that's just my basic strategy. And then I'll pin it when I have um, when I have it done. Yeah, I love that. And really, like, a lot of times when I rework something, um, I will then publish it again on the front page um, because it's something that people haven't seen in a while. And there's, I just made a beautiful image for it, so there's no reason why not to exploit that. Um, Ooh, so that's yeah. something that um, that is, you know, if especially if you have a blog that you are publishing on a regular basis and you're getting, mm -hmm. you know, new viewers all the time, it's not like anybody's gonna be like, I saw that 18 months ago. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. And people with their kids' ages, I mean, we're. Our demographics growing up and and changing, so it's it's always going to be some new people. So true, but yeah, I'm like with you when I go back and look at some of these things. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe yeah. like, people didn't yeah. scream in horror when they saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> so it's kind of like a rebirth. You get to redo it. <laughs> you get a <to> rebirth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jenny, how do you what how do you make um your content new again on on Pinterest? I've gone back and tried to edit the photos as best I could, and if it's a food, I'll normally try to redo it and get a new, brand new image in there that's bold and beautiful, um, and that's going to catch attention. Um, there was one that I was noticing that I'd get a couple hits off of, and I had loved it. It was a no-so high chair tutu that I did for my daughter's um, second birthday, and image was terrible. You couldn't even tell what it was. And I was able to just throw it into PicMonkey, lighten it up, do a little couple little things here with the cropping, and it's perfect. And I, I get a ton of traffic off of that, okay. that pin. Yeah, and I'll tell a little secret about some of the things I do, um, too, is because I have so many boards um, that are kind of related or age-related or, you know, activity-related that a lot of the content works, is if I can't decide on a picture, um, I may go ahead and make two images and try the pins on different boards that are kind of equal and just see where it goes. And the crazy thing is that sometimes one of those pictures will do great and the other one will just fall flat and it makes it really easy to go back, delete the other one in the post and just let it run. Um, because 
Or the other thing I will do is put it lower, put the less um, attractive image lower in the post if it did fairly well because sometimes people do pin those lower post um, photos. I don't know why because like the pretty ones at the top, but um, but just you know people have different preferences. So um, it's something. Don't be afraid to like delete things and try again or move it to a new board or delete the pin and start over again. Like you sh it doesn't have to be a a permanent record of things that you thought you liked. <laughs> so, all right, so um, we're going to wrap this up. This has been super informative. I've learned so much from you girls. But one of the things I want to kind of leave everybody with is, um, like, if you're just getting started on Pinterest, whether that be you're just starting your account or that you've been on Pinterest but you haven't really been doing the best you could over there, you want to kind of add a little bit of oomph behind it, you know what's something you've learned, or what some what is something that you'd suggest um, for success um, starting now? Um, let's start with you, Jenny. Um, I would have to say, oh, goodness, Tally caught me off guard. I was staring at something else too. Oh no! Um, I get that class up in front of the classroom. Not sure what I'm going to go with. I'll come back um, to you. I will put Lisa think, on thank the you. spot. <laughs> Lisa, do you have something that you can add? Um, yeah, I think just from my own experience, uh, when you find a, 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 another blogger on Pinterest and you're really inspired by them and they're sort of breaking the mold, they're thinking outside of the box, you know, um, I would say follow them and kind of do what they're doing and then put your own spin on it. And that's what I uh, started doing years ago, and I, I, I highly recommend doing that. You follow and see what some of the other bloggers are doing and, and try to uh, you know, be inspired by them. I love that because there's so many people that are doing so many different things and doing it so well. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Just make it yours. Um, Melissa, what would you say? Um, one thing that worked for me, especially early on, and I haven't done that lately, but I think it's still effective, is to write posts about using Pinterest or like the best people to follow or the apps for Pinterest or something that's um, useful content that will um, help your readers but also pr you can promote yourself so that you're um, getting links to your Pinterest account mm -hmm. um, as many as you can and um, and featuring yourself without being too self-promoting. <laughs> Which I love that. Ways to kind of work around it. <laughs> yeah. So Jenny, have I have you thought of something, or should we just like put you in the back of the class for the? <laughs> I think we may have to put me in the back of the class, but I do love Lisa's idea. I have to tell you, she said that, and I'm like, that's what I've been doing on my blog. That, that makes so much sense to do it with Pinterest. I hadn't thought of trying to do that because I've definitely tried to change my pictures and things that are on my blog because I've noticed that someone's blog is gorgeous and I love it and I want to read it all the time. So why not do that in social media? It just makes so much sense. I love that too. Um, and the thing is that I think what I would want to say as a parting word is really um, remember that Pinterest is a social network. So that means that you can be social on it. Like your, your pins can be chatty, they can be, you know, just tell people why you're pinning it. You can leave comments on other pins, and that's a way that people can get to know you better as well. And I think sometimes we get go into the repin and just kind of getting things out that, that we forget that it is a social network. So anyway, thank you girls so much, and um, I just really appreciate everyone being here. And we will probably follow this up at a later time with some more in-depth um, tips since we just kind of scratched the surface. Thanks so much, everybody.